What's up everybody? Chris Blevins here. Welcome back to the channel. We're up at the pier early morning, late August, making micro max by the pier and we are headed west. We're looking for Dorado. We are looking for offshore species today. We're not going for the yellowtail. I have tanked up on bait. My bait tank died this morning. I had to completely rewire it. So it's been an interesting morning already. Uh, and I just had a yellowtail blowing up on the surface right here, right next to the pier. I was hoping to get some video of it, but it looks like he already got his snack and moved on, but it looked like a big fish blowing up right here in 10 feet of water. There's mini max all over. I am loaded up with bait. I'm gonna take these mini max, start heading west. Oh, is that yellowtail right here again? It was pretty rad seeing them blow up. Back in the day before the conservation area was enacted, you could fish for yellowtail right here by the pier. And uh, there's been a couple 50 pounders caught right here in shallow water. Uh, but anyway, we're um, on a different mission today. I got fly liners tied up. I got a couple of light setups on the Tranxes. We are gonna head west as far as we can get. I got a couple of boats. Friends who are on boats who are out here should be able to stay in touch on the radio. Kind of put in some miles, let's go. Four miles off of Scripps Pier right now. And we are in 76 degree water. It's nice and clean and blue. God, it looks really good right here. I've heard that there are Dorado within five miles. Well, starting at about five miles from shore. I am going to start trolling. I got a, a blue, uh, I got this blue X-Wrap here. I'm gonna troll that out the back. So while I'm going here, Put my X wrap out the back, start looking for patties. If I start seeing some good sign, I may uh, put a mackerel, troll a mackerel out the back too. Right now, I'm just trying to kind of conserve energy, I'm making about three miles an hour. Water's pretty textured, there's a little breeze on it. Cloudy right now, but the sun's supposed to come out later. Let's get lucky and find a patty. Let's go. All right, guys, we're like eight miles off the point here, out here. It's been real slow. Wind's picking up. Seen some birds scratching around. And uh, take a look, it's about, I don't know if you can even see the shore with a GoPro, but we're a ways out here. Get, getting some good exercise, pedaling the Hobie. I have just found my first patty of the day. I reckon it might be time to put out a livey. Nice big patty. It's got two or three birds on it. Let's see what it's got. I'm gonna try to do a loop, big wide loop around it, see if I meet or anything. Get a couple casts on it. And then uh, maybe put out a live one. There we 
go. Smallest one I've ever seen, but hey, I guarantee you there's more here. It was on a Mini Mac and my bait was way out that way. Yeah. Gotta make sure I don't lose this thing. Oh my God, it swallowed the hook too. 20 pound. Oh yeah, my line's fucked up too. All right, all right, all right. You're gonna die. Bit of meat on him. First kayak Dorado is a three pounder. Let's get another one. All right, yeah, we, we found this kelp and I just caught the smallest Dorado in all of the ocean, but it's a really nice kelp though. I couldn't tell if what volume of fish is there, but I caught it like well off the patty on a live greenback, so. Uh, we're gonna work it here for a little bit. I'll let you know if we if it turns on. Is that mahi or yellow? Uh, mahi. Hell yeah, attaboy. Get another one. Yeah, that's my first kayak one. It's uh, tiny, but dude, it inhaled the freaking greenback. Like it gut hooked it with a circle hook. So. All right. Let me know. This one's probably out of your range, and if you got one, I would stick to it. Copy that, thanks for the heads up. I'll check in with you here in a little bit if this one uh, looks any good. Oh man, well that was crazy. Rolled up on that patty, didn't see much on it. I was trolling my uh, mini greenback on 20 pound mono leader, uh, trolling it around the patty. Ended up getting a bite on the fly line bait well off the patty, kind of maybe 70 yards off of it. Micro peanut Dorado, but that's my first Dorado that I've ever caught on a kayak. And that's unassisted from shore. Well, unassisted so far, hopefully we make it in okay. I don't know if you can see, but the boy is about seven or eight miles that way. So we probably got three hour paddle in. I'm trolling my Rapala. Downswell, it's gonna be a little easier than what's coming out here into the wind. But yeah, we worked that patty. I met up with a, uh, I met up with Brian early this morning at the pier. We met and then, you know, we kind of worked out outside together. Then when we found that patty, he worked his way over pretty quick. We were both fishing it for a while. We fished it hard. We threw some chum on it, threw out some of our little micro greenbacks that we have. And I ended up seeing a big school of the Dorado, probably like 20 of them or 25 of them in the school and they were right under my boat. Um, I had a, I had a fly line down right in front of them and they just didn't even care. Didn't even sniff it out. So it looks, seems like they were super line shy or just super spooky. Which is what a lot of people have been saying. They see, you can see a patty with a thousand Dorado on it and it ends up, you can't even get them to bite. Only if you have a spear gun, you can kind of just shoot them, I guess. Didn't look like there was any real big ones in the school, and it looks like kind of like I caught the smallest, stupidest one of the whole school, but I will take it. That is gonna be delicious. Probably eat it tonight. It's on ice in the kill bag. But yeah, caught it on a two-aught ring circle hook, micro greenback, 20-pound leader with a 40-pound top shot on top of 60-pound braid. Uh, definitely did not put up a hard fight by any means but I'll take it. We're gonna, I'm gonna troll my way in. You got a chance to find something else, find another patty, could uh, just get a blind strike on the Rapala. But given the amount of ground we have to cover, we gotta start moving, so we'll check in later. Whew. Oh, my legs hurt. It's been about 10 hours, maybe going on 11 hours now paddling. It has been a long one. I think we ended up about eight miles off the beach where we found that kelp, it, it was a long ways, uh, but worth it. Hey, at least we got a bite, man. Stoked, got my first kayak Dorado. It is not a big fish. It's like a five pounder, but I will take it and I'm gonna eat, I am gonna eat it and it is gonna be delicious. Challenging morning, bait tank died. I was making those mini max early and then my bait tank died my bait started dying. I had to completely rewire my bait tank before I even got my day started. Not a great way to start the day. 
but I did get the power supply reworked, bait tank turned on, kept my Mini Max alive, and those Mini Max were the ticket to getting me the bite out there on that patty because they were not hitting the lures that we had. So, hell yeah, freaking stoked. I'm a baby killer, I know. I killed a little peanut Dorado, but I tell you what, it's just the right amount of meat for us to have some good tacos, and we're gonna eat it tonight. It's sitting in ice in the kill bag. I barely ever bring ice in my kill bag, so. Paid off this time. <laughs> I am finally almost back to the launch. It's been about, like I said, I think almost 10 hours paddling, pedaling. 10 hours pedaling and uh, whew. tell you what you want to try a trip like this I would recommend it but there's a certain you know it's not like just going out for a day in La Jolla right you're you're not, you can come out to La Jolla you don't need a radio you got your cell phone you know maybe you got like a energy drink or a coffee and it's all you really need to get you through the day on the long offshore trip it's a completely different ball game you need to have plenty of water snacks i don't really eat on the boat i don't i don't really eat ever on the kayak but i had snacks i had caffeine i had a nice ipa stone delicious all those little things keep you going keep you going through the day i'm definitely going to be super hungry when we get in i'm probably going to eat this entire dorado tonight <laughs> but another thing is like I never would have done that alone. I had another kayaker, Brian. He's a follower of the channel. He told me that he's been watching our videos for a while. So great to meet you, Brian. Thanks so much for going out there with me. I met him at the pier this morning. We tanked up on Minimax and we just started heading west. You know, we were probably a mile or two apart and he was working his way out and I was. We were just staying in contact on the radio. But yeah, having the radio is gonna be clutch for you. Portable handheld VHF. This one actually has GPS on it too. Um, so in a pinch, if your fish finder dies or you don't have a GPS, then your radio has GPS. So if you ever got into a uh, difficult situation, you at least have your coordinates so you can call in. Um, I will say though, this portable handheld radio does not give you much range. Um, you can hear people transmitting. You can hear um, boats that have a, you know a strong, that have a uh, strong uh, radio signal, or definitely you can hear like the Coast Guard transmissions, but you can hear them, but they can't hear you. The broadcasting or the transmission power from these little handhelds is not super strong. So, you know, we were out there about eight miles. We were definitely borderline on the edge of cell phone service. I did have like one bar of 5G when I was out there, but it was kind of coming in and out. So I could get a text message through but it was not like consistent. Um, so can't really rely on the cell phone. You need to have the radios and a backup. I actually brought two radios today. Just in case one died, I would have um, a backup radio because it's that important. We did have a friend out here, Owen, who was in his skiff fishing way outside of us, but I was able to stay in radio contact with him more or less the whole day, which gives me you know, a lot more assurance and a lot more confidence out there because um, without even with just another kayaker if something happens there's not a whole lot they can do with you do for you other than you know sit there with you or they can't really tow you in but being in contact with boats nearby is definitely key you're going to want to learn how to use that vhf radio learn how to change the channels scan the different channels learn the proper way to hail the coast guard um, if that ever if an emergency ever does happen, it's not a skill that most people know, especially not most kayakers, um, but you should know how to properly communicate on the radio. Uh, another thing is, you know, the PFD, you should have a PFD on all the time, but out there it makes especially a big difference because um, if you end up swimming, you're gonna be swimming for a while, you know, so you wanna be buoyant. Luckily the water is 74 degrees, 76, between 74 and 76. So not a whole lot of cold water concerns, but there was a pretty decent sized Mako shark that was on that patty, scared off the Dorado. Um, no need for concern, you know, there are, sharks, there are sharks in the ocean, just in case you guys didn't know, there are sharks in the ocean. 
but uh, usually it's a good sign when they're around, you know, it means you got bait and life around. So, you know, you just got to work with what you got. We paddled, you know, 10, 11 hours, found one, actually we found a second patty on the way in, but it did not have anything on it. But you know, paddle 10 hours to find one patty, to get one bite, to catch one tiny Dorado. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Hell of a lot better than getting skunked, that's for sure. Um, unfortunately, Brian didn't get a bite on the Dorado, but he's still trying to kelp it. He's gonna go try to get his redemption fish, who knows. Hopefully he ends up hooking up some big yellowtail or something and make his day. But it's kind of the way it goes. You gotta go out there and you gotta get skunked. And uh, you gotta burn some calories too, apparently. Whew. Sitting on the squid bed's easy compared to, compared to this. But um, I am crossing the reserve line. I am on my way in with a Dorado on ice. My first Dorado from the kayak. And I, I don't know if I've heard of another kayaker getting a Dorado yet this year. Probably they have, because there's a ton of Dorado in the water. Um, waters around Southern California, all the way up to like, you know, like Dana Point and Los Angeles area. But I haven't heard of one being caught. I don't know, maybe I'm the first kayak to get one this year. Definitely not a trophy by any means, but for my first kayak Dorado in San Diego, it's a big deal. You know, if you're down in Baja, that's something else. You could get Dorado, you know, 100 yards from shore. You could get a Dorado shore casting in Baja, but catching one in San Diego, doing that much distance, putting in that much effort to get it, it's an accomplishment, it's a feat. So I'm stoked. And uh, I encourage you guys to try it too, you know, like, Sure, the yellowtail is an amazing fishery. You could just sit in La Jolla all day and have a chance to catch a trophy, but uh, it's nice to try something different. Try something different, get on a different fish. And the cool thing is, is you know, I set out with my intent. I set out saying, you know, this is the target species. Here's the bait that I'm gonna use. Here's the line and the tackle that I'm gonna use. And it all came together as planned. So that always feels good. Anyway. Uh, Hope you guys like this video. I hopefully am gonna have a lot of videos coming out in rapid succession. I have a ton of footage that I need to go through and edit. All those big yellowtail from the squid bites and some other stuff that's just been sitting around in my archives and I have not been editing. I'm sorry to all you guys who keep, keep messaging me, keep encouraging me, stick with it. And uh, you know, I should have at least a few more videos to pop out for you guys and hopefully you guys get something out of them. But uh, yeah. Who knows, it's only August 28th, I think, August 28th, so we're not quite to September yet. We could still have another month of a window of, you know, offshore kayak um, target, and there could be some tuna that come in, so I think I might try again. Um, it's definitely a workout, definitely time consuming, it's going to take up your entire day. <laughs> But as long as you're safe, as long as you plan well, stay in contact with people, stay in contact with uh, your buddies on the water and even boats that are around you. And uh, I think it's totally doable, it's totally safe. You know, you just wanna make sure that you're, check your forecast, make sure the wind's not gonna be crazy. And uh, you know, you wanna keep an eye on the current too, because today we got lucky, we didn't have a ton of current, but once you get outside, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ocean out there. You can get a really fast downhill current that'll suck you down like to like Mission Bay and it'll take you down there like a mile and a half an hour. So you'll be pedaling as hard as you can to go back up current. So keep an eye on your GPS. Make sure you're not getting sucked way south or way north, way south or way north before you head out eight to 10 miles. Otherwise uh, you could be in trouble. So be safe, get on the water and we'll see you guys at the launch.